In today's video, I'm giving you my ultimate in-depth guide to beginner guitar. If you're new to the instrument, you're definitely not going to want to miss this one. My name is Rob Reed. Let's get into it. The material in this video is a mixture of old and new content put together to give you an ultimate guide with everything you need to know to get started with playing the guitar now. I'll be covering the best guitar and accessories to buy, the fundamentals of guitar, your first three chords, your first song, and your first three basic riffs. So grab a coffee, grab a pen and paper, take notes, you're gonna learn a ton. All right, so the first thing you need, let's bring it up here, is a guitar. <laughs> and the best guitar to buy that I've seen is a Yamaha FG800. Man, amazing guitar, beautiful, beautiful um, instrument. My friend just bought one a couple months ago and I went into the store and I asked, um, I asked the salesman, what beginner guitar can you recommend? He said, check out this guitar. So I did. And man, I was blown away. This thing is so nice and made just such good quality, good quality instrument that you will never need another guitar after you buy this one. And um, what you want to look for when you're buying a guitar is this top, flat piece of wood here so i'll zoom in <clears throat> see this flat the flat top the flat piece of wood the lighter the lighter brown kind of yellow color that is the the top it's called the soundboard and you want that piece of wood to be solid okay so uh they're usually made of spruce or cedar and this yamaha is particular one is made of spruce it's a solid spruce top and that's the number one thing I look for. This is the number one thing you're going to learn tonight, too, is getting a guitar with a solid top. And the reason for that is that a solid top just resonates better and gives the guitar kind of like a life. So, for example, if you play hard, the guitar will be louder and sound big and loud. And if you play quiet, it'll be quieter. So it just... The wood gives the guitar like lots of dynamics and just gives you a really punchy, like nice punchy tone. And you might be thinking, well, like, how do you know if it's a solid piece of wood? Well, it'll say that it's solid because it's a big deal. And it will usually say on the price tag or whatever that it's solid spruce. And if you look at the guitar and you look right in the sound hole here on the, along the edges, you'll see the grains of the wood going through that whole piece of wood. So you'll see the grains running right through it if you look on an angle like that. And that's how you know if it's solid wood as well. And yeah, so I highly recommend this guitar. Or if you can't find this one, any guitar that's solid, like solid top. But the reason why I picked this guitar because it's the cheapest guitar I've ever seen with uh, this much quality. If you go to Amazon, in Canada, it's $299. It was $269, but all the prices have rose. Um, and if you go to Sweetwater in the States, it's listed for $229. That is the cheapest I've ever seen a uh, solid top guitar that's this nice. And the craftsmanship is really nice too. Like it's got this tortoise pickguard, really nice tortoise pickguard, and um, just really fine appointments. Like just feels great in your hands too, you know, like, but yeah, really fine quality appointments and really nice. So yeah, I highly recommend that one. And if, if you're buying for like uh, your child or a kid and you're not, you don't care as much about the solid top, the second one I would recommend, second option is this one. It's the uh, Yamaha F325D. And this one, I'll zoom in here. It's great, great guitar. I, I have a student actually that, that um, plays this guitar as well. And it sounds great. Man, just an awesome, another awesome guitar. And um, the only difference is this one, the, the, the top piece of wood, and this one is not solid. It's actually laminate, laminate. So meaning like the, there's pressed wood like laid on top of each other. So it's not this solid solid top so it still sounds great and you wouldn't really notice a big difference if you're just starting out um, 
it's just the only thing is is like it doesn't have that like a really potent dynamics that the other one has. So, I mean, you can strum hard, strum easy, and it's still sort of the same, it's kind of the same level of sound. Um, but yeah, just not as punchy, but still an awesome option. Number two, if you don't want to spend as much money and it's 229 on Amazon. Uh, another reason why I like the Yamaha guitars is, we'll go back to our favorite one here, is the, um, the neck is really kind of a bit smaller, so if you're a, if you're if you're young, like if your child is playing, or if you're just getting into it, the neck is a lot easier to deal with. So you can get your hand around it, and you can get, press the strings down a lot easier because it's a smaller grip, and uh, yeah, it just makes it easier that that much easier to play. Okay, so yeah, there you go. The best beginner guitar that I have ever seen, Yamaha FG800. And I've actually played it too, and I really like it. I'd buy it myself if I had the money. <laughs> okay, so then we got our second one. So next thing we want to look at when, you go, when you're go when you playing the guitar and you're just getting into it is the strings, okay? So at some point, you're going to want to change your strings. Um, I would recommend changing your strings after about six months of playing it just because they're going to get dirty and they're going to start kind of corroding. They're going to lose their punchy sound, their, their vibrancy. They're going to get kind of dull sounding. And, you know, um, like the oil from your hands can kind of slow them down, corrode them. And they just get kind of dull sounding. So, <clears throat> yeah, you want to change your strings about every six months. And I highly recommend these Elixir strings. And the reason why I picked these because they have like a special coating on them. They call it NanoWeb coating. But it's just like a kind of a special coating that protects the string and protects the life of the string. So it keeps them sounding fresh and crisp and vibrant for a lot longer than normal than if you had like just normal strings without the coating. Okay. So, um, yeah, check those out. They're right now, they're $21.99 on Amazon Canada. And in the States, I think Sweetwater has them for $18.51. But actually, a lot of companies now are putting out coated strings, like Martin has a set that you can get. And I think they're even a bit cheaper. So, yeah, just look for any coated guitar string that is a good price range for you. And the coating just helps them last longer. I've had coated strings on for quite a long time and they still sound great. And if you're buying strings, at some point you will need them. Um, I recommend 12 gauge. And this seems like the perfect size. The gauge is the size of the string. 12 gauge seems like the perfect size because they'll still sound great and sound big enough. Uh, but then they're not too easy to press. They're not, they're not too hard to press down. If you get into the 13s and 14s, they're just too heavy, like they just feel too heavy, too hard to push down, and they start to hurt your hands. So 12 gauge is the perfect, the perfect size. And they call that light gauge. And then if you want to get scientific, it's like actually 0.12 millimeters, I think. So just say 12 gauge and they'll know what you're talking about. All right. So yeah, those strings. Coated strings by Elixir. Next thing you're going to want to, next thing you're going to need is a tuner because you're going to want to tune your guitar every time you play it because guitars go to tune really easy and the humidity, the weather, you might bump it, knock it off the wall when you're walking around. You might drop it on the floor. It's not, so it might kind of knock it out of tune. Okay. Don't drop it on the floor. So um, you want a tuner. And this is a tuner I use all the time. It's called the T Guitar Toolkit. And I, it's actually an app for your phone. Can you believe that? An app for your phone. When I was young, when I was playing, learning how to play, I had to carry this big honking tuner around with me that was plastic. And I'd drop it and I'd lose it. <laughs> and uh, hey, Rose, thanks for joining me. Um, yeah, I'd lose it. So you don't want to be carrying extra stuff around with you if you don't need to. So Guitar Toolkit is, is the way to go. So it's actually 
It's an app for your phone. And it's really good. It's really accurate, super accurate. When you're in tune, the the light turns green and the arrow, the pointer sticks straight up in the air or straight up in the app. So um, yeah, and it's really accurate. I use it all the time. I've been using it for years, actually. And the cool thing about the app is it actually has other stuff in it too. It has um, scales. You can learn scales. Uh, it has a metronome, built-in metronome. Can you hear that? So if you want to practice with a metronome. And it has chords. Oh, now the metronome will stop. Stop. <laughs> has chords. And you can hear them. You can like you can strum the chords and it'll sound like a chord. Okay. So you can learn chords that way too. And you can also tune other instruments. You can tune like uh, banjo. Uh, um, you can tune 12 string guitar, bass, it'll tune basses, five and six string basses, it'll tune a banjo, a mandolin, and a ukulele. So it'll basically give you the string layout for those instruments, and you can tune with that. Yeah, great tuner, and I highly recommend. I bought it when it was like $10.99, now it's under $5. So there's a bonus for you. Um, what else is there? I'm not being sponsored by any of this stuff. I just, this is just stuff, the cheapest stuff I can find to help you get started with the accessories that you need to play the guitar. Okay. Tuner. Oh yeah. There's another tuner. If you're not into phones and you don't carry a phone around with you, um, I recommend this tuner. It's called a snark, snark tuner, snark chromatic tuner, snarky. And it clips right on the end of your guitar and it senses the vibrations of, of the instrument and it gives you a readout of your note. So once again, if you're in tune, that line will stand straight up. It'll color in that, that center line there. And uh, my, my father has one. He loves it. And I know a few people that have them. Sense the vibrations. They're $24.99 in Canada, so probably cheaper in the States if you're watching from there. Yeah, so if you don't want if you don't want a, a phone tuner, this is the second best thing. And they have great reviews on Amazon. All right. So let's move on. What do you need next? What do you think it is? Any guesses? I would say picks are the next important thing to look at. And you'd be like, well, what kind of pick should I get? I'm in the music store. There's a whole counter display of picks. There's pink ones and green ones and yellow ones and red ones and all different companies. And well, I don't know what to do. So I would highly recommend these orange Dunlop picks. Well, they're called Tortex picks made by Dunlop. And they're the perfect size, I think, for a beginner player because they're not too heavy, not too thick. They're great for strumming. And when you're learning the guitar, you're going to be strumming most of the time. That's what you're going to be working on. So great for strumming. Also good for picking too as a beginner. And um, they're 6.6 millimeters. And they come with a really cool kind of coating on them, like a white. They feel like a little bit of a white powder substance on them. And it helps grip helps grip your hand. And it's crazy. They just feel so good in your hand. And they're grippy. And they sound good too, actually. So yeah, orange Tortex picks. And once you get into like, my friend, he's a big producer in Toronto. He still uses these orange ones. Um, but once you get into more picking, I find like they can kind of be a little, little flappy for that. So I use the, um, the yellow Tortex all the time. That's the perfect medium for picking and strumming once you get more advanced. But for now, I'd stick with the orange ones. Once you get into picking, you can move up to the yellow ones. But yeah, orange and yellow will suit your needs. All right, okay, let's look on here. And next we have a couple of extras that I threw in just to help you out. So uh, picks are pretty cheap, so I didn't include the price there, sorry. So um, a few extras there that you want if you're advancing along and you wanna spend a bit of money um, 
these are good good options. So uh, I recommend getting a guitar stand because you want your guitar to be easy to grab, easy get at, to get at, and you want to leave it in the stand. You don't want it to be under in a case under your bed because you're never you're never going to take it out. Let's let's be honest. Let's be real. Okay. If your guitar is in a stand and you see it all the time, you're going to walk by and you're going to pick it up, just like that. Okay. Easy to grab. So I recommend these Hercules stands. I got one right here. And man, they're nice, really high quality. They're heavy duty. Yeah. And they're tight. They hold your guitar nice and tight. It's not going to fall over. They're just really cool and they look good. And they're a little pricey though. So maybe a Christmas present or a birthday present. They're about $43 Canadian. Okay. So that's that. And then the stand. And then capos, if you want to get into, if you're starting to get more advanced and you're interested in capos, um, I recommend these shove capos. Really nice. And I like them because they're just so slim and small and they just pop right on there. And you can adjust the tightness of them. And like, you can't even really see that it's there. Like, I mean, you know, you don't want this big honking clothespin, right? You just want this slim cable that you can't even see and they're nice and tight and they're super solid heavy duty they're a little pricey i've seen them on sale though and this one is 39.99 they're exp they look expensive for the size but you'll once you buy one you're not going to need anything else so you'll have it forever okay and then last thing is a guitar strap if you're adventuring out and you want to start standing up and you're getting crazy um you want to buy a strap. So I recommend these leather straps. And the reason for that is that the leather strap will grip your shoulder and the guitar will stay in its correct position when you put it on. So it's kind of like Velcro. The strap will just stick to you and the, and the guitar won't slide. If you, I've had a, like a nylon strap before and the guitar, I'd be standing there and the guitar would go, hmm, like that. <laughs> And you don't want to be holding up a guitar with this hand while you're playing, right? Um, I'll show you here. Yeah, okay. You don't want to be strumming and holding it at the same time. You just want to be able to take your hand away and it stays, right? Well, a leather strap will do that for you. I don't have mine here, but it's in my case somewhere. Okay, so there's a strap. Leather is a little expensive. There's one for $59.66 I found on... Amazon. Good to know the parts of the guitar because you just have to know what you're doing and you have to know what the guitar involves. So we're going to go over that first. All right. So this is the headstock. So it's called the headstock. And these are the tuning pegs. And this is the nut right here, this white part. But it's often made of bone. And it really, if it's a bone nut, it really resonates really nice, really well. Sometimes the, they're made of plastic and it doesn't, doesn't ring as nice. So make sure you have a bone nut there. And next part, next part is, um, these are the frets. So these are called frets. So this would be the first fret and second fret, third fret. And these are called fret markings right here. And then this is the neck. It's called the neck. And this is the fingerboard. And that's often made out of rosewood. And then this is the body and the sound hole right there. And these are the strings. And uh, this is the bridge right there, bridge. And the white part there, that's the saddle. And this is kind of interesting. This is called the shoulder, waist, and hip. Yeah, and this is the soundboard. This is the part. This is the part of the guitar that resonates, and the sound actually comes off of this part of the guitar. So, when you strum, this top piece of wood is what's ringing. Some people think the sound kind of magically comes out of the sound hole, which it does. But it's mainly this top piece of wood that rings. And the higher quality the piece of wood you have, the better the guitar is going to sound. So, you want this piece of wood to be like a solid, solid piece of wood, like solid spruce. 
Next thing you have to know is the string names. So, and I have a little trick to help remember the names of the strings. And it's a little rhyme. And it's, you say, every apple does get bruised easily. So E would be every. Every A would be apples. B, no, every apple D for does. G for gets. B for bruised easily for E. So the first letter of each word is the name of the strings. So every apple does get bruised easily. E, A, D, G, B, E. Can you see that? So E, A, D, G, B, E. Every apple does get bruised easily. So yeah, just memorize that. And then, the, then you have to know, after that, you have to know the finger numbers. So this is your first finger, finger one, finger two, finger three, and finger four. That's really important because you want to know, like, put your first finger on the second fret, fourth finger on the fifth fret kind of thing. So you really want to know the string numbers. And then next thing I talk about, next thing we talk about is how to properly hold a guitar. Okay, so it sounds kind of basic, kind of simple, you know, like everyone knows how to hold a guitar, but it's a bit of a trick to it. So you want to put your elbow kind of over the hip of the guitar just to anchor it so that the neck stays steady and then you can then your hand is free to move all over the neck and if you um, if you don't hold it with your shoulder like that it'll just kind of drop down and you don't want to be holding the guitar up like this with this hand because then you're not really going to be able to move like it's kind of you know like can't really do it so yeah just make sure your shoulder is holding up the guitar there. And you can take your hand away and it doesn't fall down. Yeah. And then also, when you're holding the guitar, make sure your thumb is tucked back behind the neck, just like that, because then you can play, like I said in the video, you can play more on your fingertips, and you can, be, and you can play a lot faster that way. And it's a lot easier to get a cleaner sounding chord if you're playing on your fingertips. So. Yeah, if, you're, if your thumb is hanging over the neck, it's going to be like kind of awkward. And your fingers are going to be touching other strings and bumping into other strings. And it's just going to like deaden the string. You're not going to get a good sound. Right. So yeah, just bring that thumb back and play in your fingertips. And you're going to have nice, clean sounding chords. Just keep it back as much as possible. Yeah. So that's holding a guitar. And... Alright. So, first chord we talked about was the A chord. And you might ask, okay, well that's cool. Where does that come from? What's it all about? Let's check this out. So the A chord comes from the A major scale. So it's basically just the musical alphabet. It's actually, it's just basically the alphabet. And it goes A, everyone knows the alphabet, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It just goes up to G. So music is really simple. It's just only seven, the first seven letters of the real alphabet. So if you know the first seven letters of the real alphabet, you can play music. You don't even have to know the whole alphabet. It's, it's just crazy. And then it starts over again, A. So it'd be like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, F, G, A, B, C, D, F, G, into infinity and beyond. <laughs> okay? So then so that's our a, a major scale. You notice the C is sharp here, the F is sharp, and the G is sharp. Don't worry about that right now. We'll get into that in a, late, a later lesson, and we'll tell, tell you how all that happens. And there's just the notes on the musical staff. Okay? We've got treble clef. We've got five lines. We've got four spaces. This is the A note right here on the musical staff. This is the B note, the C sharp note, D, E, F sharp note, G, A note. Okay, that's all I want you to know for right now. Then we're gonna harmonize the notes of the major scale. We're gonna add an extra note right here, and that's a third up from that note. So we're gonna add a third here and another third right here. And that's gonna create what's called a triad, which is a three note chord, where it's just three notes stacked on top of each other which forms what's called a triad, okay? So let's see what that looks like. 
when we do that. So we're harmonizing the notes of the A major scale. Boom. There we go. So we got, there's our A note. Well, it's actually, it's dropped down an octave. It's a little, it's the same note, only down an octave. Sorry about that. It might be a little confusing for you. So we just put the three notes on top. So now we have A, C sharp, and E. Don't worry about that. So now we just, all you have to worry about is there's a, A is, becomes a three note chord and it's called the one chord. So if I put a number on each note here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I numbered each note of the scale, this is what we would get. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm stacking thirds on the A, I'm stacking thirds here, I'm stacking thirds here, I'm stacking thirds here, harmonizing the notes. So then I get what's called, what ends up being an A major triad here. And that's, it becomes the one chord. That's the one chord, because it's the first chord. And let's move along, we get the, we, this becomes a B minor chord. This becomes a C sharp minor chord. We'll get into that later. But look at this. Then we come to a D chord. So these are triads stacked here. And then an E chord. So we, and they're, they're one, four, and five. So the, mo the most important chords that we're worried about right now are the one, the four, and the five chord. And you can play hundreds of songs with just these four chords. Isn't that cool? A, D, and E. Hundreds and hundreds of songs with just these four, no, three chords. It's live. It's live, I tell you. Okay, so A, D, and E are the chords that we're going to learn today. And this is where they come from. They come out of the major scale when you harmonize and stack thirds. A major, D major, and E major. And that's why they're capitalized. They're like big Roman numerals because they're the one, the four, and the five are major, and they're the most important chords. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. Let's move on. And um, yes, there you go. Where do they come from? <laughs> I'm a little late on the draw. Okay, so let's move on now. Let's learn how to play the, our first chord, the A chord. And this is also kind of another review from last, last time. So here it is. There's a cool view. Uh, so there's our A major chord. So this is a chord box. You might already know all this stuff already. Chord box. It's as if you're looking at the guitar just like this, like straight on. Okay. So that that that's the nut. That's the nut. The top dark part is the nut right here, and that's the top of our chord. Okay. I can't even get there. <laughs> so there's the nut. That's the top. First fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret. So you have the first four frets on that drawing that I have up there, that chord box, okay? So the one is your first finger. That's where you put your first finger, and that is actually the G string. The two is the D string, and the three, you put, the two is your second finger. Remember, we did our number of fingers, one, one, two, three. Second finger, third finger. Okay, so let's do that now. I want you to grab your guitar. Let's play, let's put our fingers on these, in this fret. Okay, so we got, so we take our first finger, one, two, three, third string, G string, second finger, D string or fourth string, and then third finger is the B string. Now I play the A chord a little funny. Sometimes people just play it like that. I play it like, like this, kind of like triangle, because it's gonna help you later when we start switching them, okay? So there's our A major chord, we're moving along. I want you to go through, tuck your thumb, don't hang your thumb over, someone was asking me this yesterday. Tuck your thumb back, just so you have that space there between your palm and the the so you don't want you don't want to be blocking the like that just yeah have that space there and then so you don't touch the string and block it from ringing take your pick go through and play each chord each note get each note to sound you ready watch I hope that sounds okay so practice that keep your thumb back and get each note to sound and go through it okay so that's your A major chord. Okay, now we're gonna move on. That's your A major chord. So now we're gonna move on to our the next chord I want you to learn. Actually, yeah, grab your chair, let's play together. Ready? One, two, three. Good. Okay, let's move on to the next chord I want you to learn. This is the D major chord. And it looks like this. So there's a chord box again. The circles mean you play those strings, the X's mean you don't play that string, okay? So don't play the string. And here we go. First finger is on the G string. 
Second finger is on the high E string. Third finger is on the B string. I don't want to get. I want you to get used to reading the chord boxes the way that because it's like when you're doing tab or when you're looking at chord sites on the internet. This is how the chords look. So this is a good practice for it. Okay, first finger on the second fret, G string. Oh, this sounds familiar. Second finger, high E string, second fret, and third finger, B string, third fret. Okay, so it looks like that. It's looking like that. Okay, let's go through. You don't want to pick the low E strings. Let's go through and pick from the A string. Well, from the D string, actually. Got it. Go through and make sure each note sounds. Get that thumb back behind the neck. Have that space between your palm and the neck. D chord. You got it. Practice that. And the next chord we're going to learn is our E major chord. Look at that, I'm getting the hang of this already. E major, chord box, coming at you. First finger in the first fret this time. And that's the G string again. Wow, we've got a theme going on. We're hanging around on the G string with our first finger, remember that. Okay, second finger, jump way up here, fifth string. And third finger, jump way up, fourth string. So we're in the first and second frets. Let's go through and make each note sound. This is a beautiful chord because you can play every note of every string. Watch this. I hope that sounds okay. Nice big full chord. So go through and do each note. All right. Okay. So now the trick is changing between the chords now. This is where it gets tricky. What do we have up here next? Okay. Okay. So what I want you to do is this is, I, I like to think that I made this up, but I don't think I did. Because uh, everything's been done before, I have a certain look, cool method called the lip, the lift, slide, jump method, where I'm going to make it super simple for you to change these chords. Okay, so watch this. Go back to our A chord again, and then okay, so play your A chord. Now watch what we do. We're going to use our first finger as an anchor that's going to help us hold our position and get to the next chord. So we're going to go from A. We're going to lift. All of our fingers off except for that first finger. Now, this is the most important part of this whole video. Okay, this is what I want you to get out of this whole video. Leave your first finger there, lift all your other fingers off. So we got A, lift, drop down to D. So then you go, remember what D looks like? Then you drop down and you put your second finger, second fret, E string, then down for your other string there, the B string on the third fret. So what we're doing is we're pivoting off that first finger. It's not coming off the neck because we'll get lost, okay? So it's staying there. We lift, slide, drop down to D, okay? And then when we're gonna go back to A, we lift and we pivot back to the A chord. So it's just a movement, kind of a jump pivot motion that we're doing with, with this finger staying on that second fret, okay? Watch, boom, D. So A, lift, drop down to D. You put this finger down first and this finger down second. Go back, put this finger down first, this finger down second. I have a grade three student who can do this and she's just rocking it. Okay, lift, slide down, drop down to D. Go back to A. So just practice that movement back and forth. Now we're going to go and we're going to do this to our E chord. Okay, so now this is our lift, slide, jump. So watch this. We're going to lift. Keep that first finger there, slide back, don't take it off, just slide back. First fret, and then jump to the um, e, these other two notes right here, fifth and fourth string, okay? So let's do it again. So we got our A, I'll move a bit for you. A, lift, slide back, jump to E. And then go back to A, lift, slide forward, go to A. Lift, slide back, go to E. I think this is the most valuable part of the whole video. This is going I just want to help you guys. I want to bring you value. This is it. Okay. So now we're gonna take that and we're gonna change course. So let's do it. A, two, three, four, lift, drop down to D. Lift, jump back to A. Lift, slide back, don't take it off, jump to E. Lift, slide forward, back to A. Okay, super important movement. You got it, you can do this.
Your first song is Hey Jude. You guessed it. I gave it away earlier. It's Hey Jude by the Beatles or Paul McCartney. I'd like to give a little history here. It was released, it was written by Paul McCartney, released as a single in 1968. It spent nine weeks at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. And Paul McCartney wrote it in an attempt to comfort John Lennon's son, Julian, after Lennon left his wife for Yoko Ono. And then written as a positive outlook on a sad situation. McCartney still performs the song live ever since Lennon's death. He um, performs it live to this day in concerts. And it has that massive ending. Na, 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 na. Okay. All right. So if you're on the internet and you're looking to play a song, you probably are searching, doing searches, and you're going to come across something that looks like this. Okay. And you're like, oh man, what is going on here? I got letter, I got words, I got lyrics, and I got enough letters on top. And how, how do I strum the song? First of all, how, what's the strumming pattern? What am I going to do? I'm not going to bother guitars too hard. No, don't do that. I'm going to help you. Okay. So the first thing you want to look for is you want to know the time signature of a song. Okay. And that's going to help you get a, a sense of a kind of get a grid for the song. So it's going to look, if we want to build a blue, a blueprint of the song, it's going to look like this. Okay. It's going to, it's going to have our time signature out here. So we know that the song is in four, four time. So that's four, four on the top left hand side there. The top four tells us there's four beats per bar. So a song is divided up into bars and this song has four beats per bar. So most rock songs that you hear are all in four, four mainly. Most, most music is in four, four. So it's like one, two, three, four, one, so that's the count of the song. And that's the beat. One, two, three, four. So we're just going to do down strums on the beat. Okay. So you have the chords on top. You have A, E, and D written on top. You have the lyrics underneath. And those down strums. And the down strums are the most important because they're, that's the beat. And you're keeping time. Someone, someone told me that guitar is like a, a rhythm, is like a rhythm instrument. It's like a drum. You're keeping time with, for the song. So our strums are just keeping time. Okay, pretty simple. You probably know this already. Okay, so we're gonna go through and we're gonna play our our chords, and we're gonna do our lift drop down method that I taught you in the last video, and we're just gonna do down strums. And notice that the down strums are all on the beat. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, so on. Okay, so let's try. So grab your guitar, play that A chord if you can. Do you, do the best you can. Maybe I'll play it through, through first, okay? So let me get my note here. Okay, so it's gonna sound like this. Hey, Jude, don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. Remember to let it into your heart when you can start to make it better. Yeah. And that's the timing and the feel. So you have to complete each one of those beats in the bar, or it won't work out mathematically or rhythmically, rhythmically, like it won't make sense, okay? So that's why you have to, that's why I show you this picture to see what the bars and the beats look like. But but our goal is to like internalize this and memorize it and kind of get the feel for it so that we don't have to look at a grid like this all the time. Just know that the song, know the time signature of the song and I mean the key or the chords and you'll be good, okay? So time signature, most important for reading charts, okay? Okay, so grab a guitar, let's try it together. And remember, actually, let me explain it first. <laughs> okay, here we go. One more time. I'm going to explain it through. So I got my A chord, and I'm going to go, so four beats. So one, hey, two, don't make it. And I'm going to lift, slide back to my E chord, and jump to E. Bad. Stay on E. 
Take a sad song and make it. Now lift, slide forward to get to A. Better. Remember, keep your thumb back. I'm not like up, I'm not like this. I got my thumb back and I got my palm down. And then come D's coming up. You want to look ahead. Three, drop. Okay, then keep your pivot finger there. Drop down to D. Remember to letter A to your. Now lift, pivot back to A. Hard. Then you can start. Lift, slide back to E. Start to make it lift, slide forward to A. Okay, so you're going to be slow with this at first. It's going to be frustrating. You're going to want to give up, but don't give up, okay? It's going to take a couple of weeks just to get moving quickly. And if you play this a hundred times, I guarantee you'll be you'll be flying, okay? So that was a kind of a breakdown, a slow breakdown for you. Um, yeah, okay? So let's play through it nice and slow together this time. Okay, and you can always go back and rewatch the video. Okay, here we go. Hey, you don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. Remember to add into your heart, and you can start to make it. I'll do it one more time and just count it this time, okay? So it's going to, if you counted it, it would sound like this. Hey, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three. Okay. All right. So you can you can even go through and follow the bar and just like watch as I go through. I'm playing each one of those downstrums. Super important just to get that beat because you want that to be the backbone of the situation and the groove of the song. Okay. And that's how you figure out the strum pattern. You're just basically playing the beat. And then you want to spice things up a bit. It's a little boring. So we want to add extra down strums to sound more like rock and roll. So we're going to play some down extra down strums on the ands. Okay, so now instead of going one, two, three, four, we're going to go one, two, and three, and four. So the, rit the, the rhythm would be, or beat would be one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. Okay, so let's just take it, play an A chord and just strum that rhythm. Okay, so one, two, and three, and four. We're spicing it up. We're making it a little uh, more interesting. And McCartney's going to be taking us on tour in no time. <laughs> okay. Okay, ready? So let's try it with that extra dance drum. So, hey, June. Actually, let's just count it. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. You can just go through and do that a bunch of times to get comfortable. And you'll eventually just internalize the feeling of that. And then it'll just come natural eventually. So you don't have to like memorize it. It'll just feel natural. And you want to play by feel. You don't want to think about what you're doing. Okay, so now let's add the lyrics. Okay, so. Uh, ready? One, two, three. Hey, June. Don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. Remember to better into your heart. You can stop to make it better. All right, got that? So we spice it up with adding some extra down strums on the ends. Okay, now to make it a little even a little more interesting, we're going to add a new chord 
to the situation. This is an E7 chord, okay? So instead of playing E, normal E, we're gonna lift our middle finger off. No, we're gonna, we're gonna lift our third finger off and that's gonna create an E7 chord. Okay, so it's gonna sound, there's E, lift our ring, third finger off, there's E7. So you see, you can hear that. That cool sound, that's kind of like a Beatles sound there. So it's only a two finger chord now. Okay, and it's gonna make it interesting. So it's an E7, we're gonna add that into the mix. So you got lots to think about. You got lyrics, you got chord changes, you got a beat, and now we're adding an E7, okay? So yeah, actually, you're, so you're thinking about the chord changes, you're thinking about the beat or the rhythm, the one, two, three, four, and now you're, and then you wanna be able to fit the singing over top of that, and then we're adding E7. So let's, let's give it a shot, okay? So, ready? So, hey Jude, don't make it bad. Take out your dirty seven. Sad song and make it better. Remember to enter into your heart. Then you can start to make it better. All right. I like to teach riffs because they're a great way to get your fingers moving up and down the fretboard. It's a great way to learn the neck and it's a great way to um, develop your technique. So the first riff we're gonna look at is, uh, the first riff I teach is um, uh, Seven Nations Army by the White Stripes. This is a great riff because it's only uses one finger and you're kind of sliding that finger up and down the neck. But first, let's check out a little bit of background on the song. It's uh, the first single from the band, The White Stripes from the band's album, Elephant, and it was released in 2003. It's considered by critics as one of the best songs of the 2000s, that decade. Uh, it has become a sports anthem and it's used at major sporting events. And it was used in the 2018 FIFA World Cup. And uh, Jack White, when he was writing the song, he showed the riff to an executive at his record label and the executive said, yeah, it's okay, but I think you can do better. And I think it already was good enough. <laughs> and the title came from, um, I often wondered like where, what, like what does that mean, Seven Nations Army? And I always call it Seven Nation Army and I got it all mixed up. But I actually found out that the name, the title comes from uh, Jack White. He misheard the Salvation Army when he was a child. And he thought it, the Salvation Army was called Seven Nations Army. So that's where it comes from. Kind of cool. Okay, so let's look at the tab here. And I'm just going to show you how to play it, okay? So if you're playing along with a record, I believe it starts on the 12th fret. But I like to start it, teach it a little, diff uh, teach it a little different here in a different key. So we're going to start in the 7th fret, just so that you can utilize the entire neck so you can kind of move up and down the entire neck and get used to that and get comfortable with that okay so take your first finger and we're going to start on the seventh fret so you can count up one two three four five six seven okay and we're just going to use that one finger so, you, so you're going to go seven 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 slide up the tenth fret back to seven five three two okay and that's reading the tablature there i have see that seven is on the low e string so you know where you are and, and reading the tab tablature tablature is basically just looking at the guitar neck so you get the low fret the low string up to the high string so you're basically just it's just a picture of the guitar neck and the number is what finger to put your fret the number is what fret to put your finger in. Okay, so let's try it together nice and slow. It sounds like this. All right, so you can try that along with me. So grab your guitar and let's try it together. One more time. So it's 
Seven, 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 ten, seven, five, three, two. Okay, and then the second half, it's a little bit of a variation. It goes seven, 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 ten, seven, five, three, back up to five, three, two. Okay, so you can follow along in the tablature. Okay, I'm going to play the whole thing for you a little bit slow. All right, that's it. You got it. And I'm going to play it one more time in normal speed. It's a little faster. Has a bit of a swagger. You want to put a bit of a swagger to it. Okay, so it's like. Okay, I'm sliding up to that 10. All right, so there you go. First riff. First simple riff. These are really easy riffs. Get you moving up and down the fretboard, get you knowing the, the fretboard and having fun. The second song is uh, the riff from the song Thunderstruck by ACDC. And a little bit of background here. Uh, Thunderstruck is the first single from ACDC's album, The Razor's Edge, and it was released in 1990. It reached number five on the Billboard's hot mainstream rock tracks. And it's used in a ton of movies and TV shows. It's used in Planes, Fire and Rescue. I've never seen that, but it's used in the new Super Mario Brothers movie. It's used in Varsity Blues, The Longest Yard, Daddy's Home, and Battleship. And see if you can name some other TV shows or movies that you've seen it in. Uh, the video reached 1 billion views on YouTube on October 29th, 2021. That's pretty crazy. And it's widely considered the song, the band's best song by many critics. Okay, so the tablature will look like this. Another really simple riff. So notice here's the low E string, and we're we're moving right up to the um, B string. So the riff is actually on the B string or the second string from the bottom, and it goes. You're going to play open first, so open, four, so I'm in the fourth fret there, so one, two, three, four, so it goes open, four, and then with my pinky, or my fourth finger, so one, two, three, four, my fourth finger or pinky, this is the reason why I picked this riff, because it's pretty challenging, and it gets your, well, it's easy, but it's challenging, because it gets your finger working gets strength built up in your fourth finger which can be kind of weak on the guitar so it's open four open seven and when you do it just take your hand off and move up to the seven okay so you don't need to keep that finger down and then go up like that so it sounds like this open four open seven okay and you can just pick down for now you can just pick down for now with this hand, with this, this hand. <laughs> so open, let me do a view so you can see everything here. Uh, no. Okay. So it looks like this. And then when you get to that part, you slide up to open fifth fret, open five, open eight. So open and then fifth fret, open again, eighth fret, open five, open eight, open five, open eight. Okay. And then you just go back again and repeat the whole thing again and just slide everything back to open four, open seven. And open five, open eight. And I just want you picking down for now. Just pick down for now with your right hand. Okay, so check it out. OK, 
Okay, so I'm just picking down. And then when you get more comfortable with it, you can pick up and down, okay? So when you pick up and down, you're moving. Man. So I'm picking up and down on the string. So it's like. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, okay? Picking up and down. So when you get more comfortable with the downs, then you can pick up and down. So it'd be, it would look like this. Yeah, so it's a great riff for getting strength in your pinky, fourth finger, and for learning how to pick up and down as well, okay? So you want to get it up to speed, have some fun with it. Once you get really good at it, you'll be flying. <laughs> yeah, all right. Awesome. Man, ACDC is going to be calling you in no time. Uh, last song is a little more involved because it ha you're jumping strings and picking picking more strings. And it's Don't Fear the Reaper by the Blue Oyster Cult. This is a great one. It sounds really cool. And uh, it's from Blue Oyster Cults from their album Agents of, of Fortune, released in 1976. It's the highest charting single that the band's ever had. It reached number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100. Uh, it was... It was um, in April 2000, you guys may have seen this, it was done as a sketch on Saturday Night Live with uh, Will Ferrell. Oh man, hilarious. You gotta check it out if you haven't seen it. It's so funny. So it kind of made the song popular again. And it was named the song of the year in 1976 by Rolling Stone magazine. And here's what it looks like for the tablature. Okay. So I'll uh, get the low E string again. So we have open. The first note is open, so that's an open A string, and then second fret, D string, second fret, G string, and then open, okay? So it would look and sound like this. And I kind of take, you kind of take your whole hand right off there, if it's easier for you. So I'm just picking down the strings. And you notice I picked the G string twice, okay? So it goes, just like that, okay? Really simple. Let me do the full screen here so you can see. Okay, because it's a little more complicated. Okay, sounds like that. Then the next part is, next part goes three, three, two, zero, zero. And you're just raking right down the strings, basically. So three, two, zero, zero, looks like this. It's basically just the top of a G chord. So there's my three, two, and then zero, zero are open. So, and you're just playing right down the whole string, okay? So it looks like this. Okay, and then the next part goes to one, three, zero, zero. Okay, so it's one, first fret is one, one, th um, three, third fret. You can use your pinky or this finger, whatever you feel comfortable with. And then zero, zero. So you're just plucking, you're just picking down those strings as well. Okay, I'll show you again here. And then the last part, you go back to the second part, so three, two, zero, zero. So you're basically just learning three different positions. So back to the three, two, zero, zero. Okay, so I'm gonna put it all together for you so you can hear how it sounds. Get this stuff out of our way. Okay, ready? Here we go. Don't fear the reaper, nice and slow. Okay, 
Then you want to get it up to speed like the album. So it, they played a bit faster. It's, just, it's like this. All right, great. So have fun with that one.